Hey everybody, Patty Ann here. Hey, Joan had asked in my YouTube video or a, a, a comment, how do you use the glyphs in Silhouette Business Edition in Cricut Design Space? So I'm going to show her right now. She said she got the Samantha font, which is a fabulous price. Oh, oh, let me fix this. And I'll have the link for it down below this video for you. You might want to take advantage of it because it's one of the best fonts that there is to use, especially this new one that's available. It's called Samantha Craft because it's been made a little tiny bit thicker so it's easier to cut with all of our cutting machines. So let me just uh, group this. All right, so the first thing I did was I just came over here to the text tool on the left, came over here and typed in the word to Joan, for Joan. <laughs> and I'm just gonna make it larger. And the capital letter there in the beginning is kind of pretty already here. But let's say we want to put some fanciness underneath her name. So I have used Samantha Craft already. I came over here and found it. And to use the glyphs in this program, all you have to do is come up here to the middle button, if you have Business Edition or Designer Edition too, I think. And while it still says Samantha Craft right here, it shows me all of the glyphs that are available. And this is so fabulous that we don't have to go to any exterior programs to use this. Well, let's just see if there is a J, H-I-J. Here's here are some other J's I could choose from if I wanted to. Ooh, that one's pretty. I like that one. So I cl double clicked on it and it came in, let me move this out, right up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, right click and ungroup her name here and get rid of this J and bring this one down instead. I don't know. Maybe it's a little too jazzy. What do you think, Joan? <laughs> it's up to you. Anyway, there's that. I could leave it like that if I wanted to or change it to any of these other ones. I don't know. Look how fancy they are. But anyway, I was also going to scroll down here and find something that I could put underneath. These are all the glyphs that are available in this. Now, not only are there uh, fancy things, but there are words, text words that are really fancy. And uh, Joan, if yours aren't seeming this big as mine when you're looking at them, don't forget there's this little slider down here so that you can make the glyphs look larger. And then when you hover over it, of course, you get an even larger view. But I'm going to put something underneath here. Let's see. There's lots of different swirly things you can put under these. <clears throat> when we get down to here. It's all kinds of stuff that we could put. And I think I'm going to switch back to this J because I think I want to add something really fancy like this under it. So I'm going to bring this down here. I'm going to stretch it out so I like the shape and the size of it. Okay, that looks pretty weird. don't know if I like it that stretched. Yeah. I think I don't like it stretched quite like that. So I could look for another one if I wanted to. <laughs> and it looks like I chose exactly the same one. I must really like that one. Let's see if there's another one in here that I could choose. How about this? Just simple. Bring this down. Oh, these two got stuck together, so I've got to ungroup them. And now I can just bring this one down and I can stretch it out larger. And I think what I'll actually do with this one is flip it. So I can just right click on it and say flip vertically. I think it would be, yes, just like that. And that could be it. So let's get rid of these other ones so as not to confuse us. And let's pretend we really like this. So I would right click on it after selecting it all and say weld. And I'd probably also group it. That's something a little bit different here in um, Silhouette in Cricut. When we group it, it's already stuck together or weld it. Sometimes in this program, it is not. So I'm going to group it as well. All right. So now what I'll do is I'll just select this. And I'm going to come over here. Now, this is what we do for Cricut Design Space. I'm just going to come up here to File, Save As. And there's two different ways we could do this. 
we could save it as a JPEG and I'll show you the two versions. First I'm going to save it to my hard drive and I'm going to save it as Joan for Joan and I'm going to save it as an SVG. We can only save things as SVGs when we have the business edition. I'll have a link for that down below for you too if you're interested. So here's Joan for Joan and say OK. That's an SVG. And I'm also going to save it, file, save as, save to my hard drive, Joan, whoops, Joan for Joan. And I'm going to save this one as a JPEG. I suppose I could also save it as a PNG. But I don't know that the transparency works there. Let's try it just for the heck of it. Go to File, Save As, Save to Hard Drive, and I can finally save it as Joan for Joan, Own for Joan, and I'll save it as a PNG. This is a good little test for us to do to see what happens in Cricut Design Space. Just leaving all of these boxes that pop up just as they are. So now we're going to go over to Cricut Design Space. And I've already been playing here with one thing, so let me get rid of this one. And let me put my canvas color back to white, because that's what we're used to seeing. Okay, so I'm going to upload. I'm going to upload an image, browse, and I'll start with the Joan for Joan, the one that was the SVG. And this is the one it is. You see it says SVG. I'll open that. There it comes in just like this. I can say save and I can click on it and say insert it and there it is and I can make it any size I want to. Now Joan was saying that she wants to be able to make the sentiments like I had shown in our Silhouette Software class. It's a class we have every Saturday that's a live class. You're welcome to join us. Just come over to patreon.com slash pattyann and join us. It's only five dollars a month and you get four or five hour long classes. But anyway, so we have this right now and what Joan can do if she wants to make this as a sentiment card and usually I just make mine rectangles. Uh, she could get a square right here and drag it out so it's larger than what she needs. Right click on it and say send to the back. Okay, there we go. Let's move her name and this these aren't grouped together in here. I've got to group them, I think. Oh, they're grouped. I didn't think they were. All right, I can make the box smaller now so it just fits. I can unlock it so I can make it perfect sized. And of course, I would not want it to be black like that. I would make it white. So come up here and change the box to white. So that's perfect, just like that. And I could group these together. But what I would actually do right now, see, notice the word Joan, if we look up here, it's a cut file. She doesn't want it to cut. She wants it to be a sentiment like I had shown on my cards and that you can make a whole slew of them to add to your cards if you like making cards like I do. But what she could do now is just highlight both of these and say flatten. And when she says flatten then, it's flattened to a print then cut and that's what she wants so that would be perfect just like that she can make it any size she wants now whatever she likes okay the, now the next one that I said we could bring in is well let's try it let's see upload upload an image browse and I'm gonna browse for the other one let's see what's next Next will be the JPEG file. So let's bring that in. You'll see what we have to do to be able to use that one. That one comes in a little differently. Let's go to Complex and Continue. And you'll notice that this has, well, I've got to scroll out. Oh, that came in really oddly. Let me cancel this for a sec. wonder why that did that. Let's see, Upload. I must have done something to that. Upload an image just now. Browse. Joan is a JPEG. Open. And I'm just going to click, click Complex. And Continue. And now I need to come way up here because it's really zoomed out. 
I need to use the Select and Erase tool to come in here and get rid of the background. Now notice this is going to take a little bit more time than the other way and a little bit more of a pain because I've got to go into all of these little places and sometimes there are a whole slew of them that you need to get rid of and then go to continue and I can use either one of these now the cut image or the print then cut. I use the print then cut and say save and now I can bring this in by inserting it and it comes in really large like this. Now this one already comes in as a print then cut so I don't actually have to have a box behind it. But let's see what's going to happen. Let's change the background color to something other than white and let's look. So it's going to print this and then it's going to cut around all of these little doodads here, right? So that's not what she wants, I'm sure, at least I don't think so. So what she would want to do then is to get a shape once again and put it behind here, right click, send it to the back, resize it however she wants, and she can change the color of this to white. And now if she goes to print and cut, this still isn't going to work very well because watch what's going to happen. This one's going to be fine. Let's make it. These two both printed on this one. Then we have a separate sheet that just cut out the square that was behind the second Joan word, which is not really what we wanted. So what you would do is probably highlight both of these and say flatten. So now they will be two separate ones. So if we go to make it, uh, while you can't really tell on this, it is going to cut around these two squares. And this is that problem that I've told you about in many of my videos before. If you're not sure what's going to print, then cut. It's smart to go ahead and change your canvas color because if my canvas color was still white, I really wouldn't know what was going to cut. So if I had left this like this and had not put that box behind the name Joan and I thought it was going to cut out of a box and it cut out all around the individual letters, I really wouldn't know why. But if I change the blank canvas color by clicking down here, the very bottom right hand corner, then coming up here at the top there's this little tiny, barely noticeable word that says color and a little tiny box. Click on that and then change the color of the background. And you can see now that there is a box behind these. Well, let's do the last one. Let's upload, upload an image, browse. And the last one was Joan PNG. Now let's see if that's any different. So we'll open that. We'll go to complex and continue. And I think this one's going to be just like the JPEG because as I said, even though it had a transparent background in um, Silhouette Business Edition, that doesn't really transfer over to um, um, Cricut Design Space. So let's minimize this and let's just continue with it like it is. It's a big box like that, right? And we could use it just like that if we wanted to. So we click on that, say save, and we can upload this. It's going to come in pretty big, but that's not really a problem for us, right? Since this is just one item, we know that we can go ahead and slice. So if I get a shape and I get a square and I bring it over on top of this, it's kind of hard to see where exactly I want it to be, unfortunately. I don't think there's a way to change the transparency here like there is over in Silhouette. So what I'd have to do is just click on this and hope for the best, click on my shift, click on that, and then I can say slice, and I can slice her name. Okay, that did some weird stuff right there. But I can slice her name right out of this, and I did pretty well, actually. So that turned out pretty good. So that's another way we could do it. So all three of these work. In my opinion, the easiest way to do it, though, 
is to just bring it over as an SVG and put a square behind it. And of course, you don't have to put a square behind it. If you want to, you could put um, another shape. You know, in the um, shapes that we can get free from Cricut Design Space or Access, I think there's one that looks like a tag. You might like to have that behind it. You know, that's up to you with your sentiments. But I hope this helps. And I did want to let you know that you can join me at pattyensplace.com and I have five free classes there that are available to you. And you can also join me at uh, patreon.com where you'll get five, four or five classes a month and they're fabulous. You will learn so much, I promise you. Um, so I hope you'll join me at those places and I hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.